You're watching another Nerd Stalker interview. Hey, good morning. This is Greg Blurry, aka Social Greg, on Twitter for the Nerd Stalker Media Network, and welcome to another Nerd Stalker interview. This is really kind of a special one. Today we talk with Scott Weiss and Chad Reynolds, co founders of Ocean Accelerator. The Ocean Accelerator is the first independent faith based accelerator in the United States and located in Cincinnati, Ohio. And so, good morning, uh, Scott and Chad. Thanks for joining us here live from. Both, I think, Chad's in Portland, Oregon, and uh, Scott's from uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. So this is going to be interesting, right? Perfect. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Ocean, let's just get into this. I don't know, Scott or Chad, you could start. Um, you know, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about your background for the Nerd Soccer audience. Go ahead, Chad. We might have lost Chad here temporarily, so I'll jump in. Yeah, um, yeah. why don't you? Perfect. So uh, I've got a long-term corporate background, which is really focused on startups and turnarounds. And I've been fortunate enough to live and work in the States, Asia, Australia. And I was out in California for a long time and then moved back to Cincinnati, uh, where I originally started up uh, turning around and selling a company called Evenflow. Then Chad, who, who has dropped out temporarily, but will be back, Chad found me and said, hey, we're starting this new thing called uh, Ocean, and uh, we cut the curriculum, because you got a lot of experience at this, and we think you'd be a good addition. And one thing led to another, and between Chad and our other co-founders, Tim Metzner and Tim Brunk, uh, ultimately asked me to kind of step in as the CEO. And, before we knew it, we had 10 companies here, and we were off and running. It, it was a great first year. Well, how, how did you meet um, Chad? I mean, how did you know each other from a previous business thing, or was it just personal connections? Or You know, classic startup connections, right? So I'm, I'm coming out of selling a company. I'm thinking, I'm going to retire. I'm kind of done with this. And I was networking and helping a different startup here in Cincinnati called The Garage Group. The co-founder of that said, hey, you really got to meet this guy, Chad, and Tim and Tim and connected us all for coffee and one thing led to the another and boom before I know it I was unretired and working hard at Ocean. Oh my god that's crazy so uh, you know when, when Chad gets back we'll talk with him a little bit but you know let's just get into this a little bit uh, you know Ocean's a very interesting story and I read some of your story online and you know how, how did the Ocean Accelerator came to be? Perfect Chad you back did you pick that one up? I'm, I'm back sorry about that. That's all right. Hotel Wi-Fi, sometimes a little spotty. but <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. Hey, right. the fact that you made the effort to do this, I, I'm impressed. But, you know, I was asking uh, Scott the question, and maybe this is better directed to you. You know, I read the story about Ocean Accelerator. It's been in, you yeah. know, a lot of the uh, faith-based publications that I've read. And, uh, and I wanted to un understand how, how did it come to be? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so a group of... Uh, I guess startup entrepreneurs ourselves, a church in Cincinnati called Crossroads, and it's a fairly large church, a little over 20,000 people um, that go to it, and roughly 30% of the attendees were involved in startups, and, and this really started as kind of a grassroots effort. Um, we had a group of entrepreneurs who got together every Thursday morning. Um, we called it Unpolished and we started to produce some speaking events for entrepreneurs to share their story. And, um, you know, like many things you do in your life, you might start out thinking something's going to be really small, and then you get surprised. And I think our first event, we had anticipated, you know, around 40 or 50 people to show up, and we had 500. So I think our group kind of knew that we were onto something about, you know, exploring the connection between entrepreneurship and faith. And a few, uh, myself and Tim uh, Metzner and Tim Brunk, two other uh, guys who were in the group, we decided to take it a step further. And Crossroads actually um, went on this journey with us and provided the initial grant and some resources uh, to help get it started. Um, so that was about like, maybe a year and a half ago. Um, this went from you know kind of just an idea 
to having you know nearly 200 companies, um, including some from different countries around the world, to apply to our program, and you know to have great leadership and mentors like Scott um, to join us on the journey. Now, now you know, tell me a little bit about the. Um, you know what what the accelerator looks like because I, I think it, it from what Fat told me one of your graduates from the program recently he told me that it was like across the street from the church and it was in an old dealership or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean Crossroads is fortunate in that they have a lot of uh, a lot of space. So there was an old car dealership um, that was on the property across you know kind of across the street. <laughs> In, in storage and different types of programs. And so we just had a creative reuse for that space. Um, and so we turned it into the accelerator. Um, maybe 6,500 square feet. Uh, it holds all 10 companies, um, all of our offices. Uh, we also do co-working out of there as well. And it just provided a great environment um, for all the companies to come together, but also to bring bring our uh, group of 83 mentors um, into the space and actually sit side by side by the companies. So some yeah, of the co-workers, some of the co-workers who come here, Greg, that you might be interested in is there's a legal clinic here at the University of Cincinnati, so they'll be here next year co-working. So all free legal services. We have about four ad agencies that co-work that provide the support. Multiple accounting firms drop in that gets you set up on your chart of accounts, and then all kinds of local entrepreneurs, both those who have succeeded and those wanting to succeed, show up. So it, it ends up being a really vibrant, it's just full of light kind of space. It's it, it's uh, it's hard for me to find a space to work here, and kind of I run the joint. So it's a pretty popular place. That's a good problem to have, right? But you know. Yeah. You know, Cincinnati isn't a podunk city. I mean, you know, it has about over, th I think, almost th over 300,000 or almost 300,000 people. And, you know, and, and the universities, uh, there's University of Cincinnati, but there's a, also Xavier, right? So, um, you know, you seem to have a pretty good, uh, you know, pool of young people that might have some great ideas coming in. But, you know, tell us a little bit about um, how the program's structured. You know, faith-based, you know, a lot of people think, Different things, you know. People who are 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 not are not uh, faith oriented, uh, you know, may look at it a little bit differently. But uh, you know, you might want to talk a little bit about that. Sure. Let me let me start, Chad, and then you can jump in. Um, it's, our our mission and vision are very clear, Greg. Our our mission is to increase God's presence in the marketplace by building into entrepreneurs. So wherever you are on the God question, that just invites a discussion, right? Like, what does that mean? That leads to our vision, which is to be a top-tier accelerator. That's very clear, right? One of the best, uh, with God at the center of everything that we do. So when we step back and look at entrepreneurs, we look at an environment that skews towards focus on financial success. And we look at the people pursuing that, and we think a lot of them pay an enormous price. They put their health at risk, their relationships at risk, their spirit, spiritual life at risk. Um, and certainly their personal wealth at risk. And we said, now let's, let's approach this differently. Let's approach this holistically and build an accelerator that every time we provide a lesson on how to succeed as a startup, we have a companion lesson on, okay, spiritually, what does that mean? So uh, program participants come in, and on Monday is always a teaching day, and they'll get a program from somebody on how to build your brand. And then they'll get a two-hour workshop program on, okay, how to build your faith, how to build your character, how to build your belief in God. We don't discriminate based on uh, where your belief is, but if you come here and take the seed capital, you go to the programs. And we kind of force an integration then between business lessons and life lessons and all kinds of fun small group stuff and all kinds of mentors coming in to talk about it so that the entrepreneur has a more holistic view on, hey, here's what I want to achieve, but I am more than my idea. And at the end of it, when my business is succeeding or not, I'm still me, and I want to have the whole me growing at the same time my business does. So it's it's pretty engaging, fun, energetic program that really challenges people beyond just jump-starting their business. 
Um, overall, we offer 55 different programs over the course of five months. Uh, that's about 250 hours of instruction time and mentoring time and, and small group discussion time, all kinds of different workshops, field trips out of the communities. We had about 12 to 14 entrepreneurs come in and tell their story, successes and failures. Um, and uh, we had about 48 hours of uh, demo day pitch practice, resulting in 1,200 people attending their demo day. We've had 5,000 people stream it or download the streaming. So, and uh, four of the companies have been funded. We're, we're feeling pretty good about how we've started with a, a lot of opportunity to make it better. No, I think um, I think you guys are onto something because I think you know. When I mentor people at my accelerator, the millennials, uh, you know, <laughs> a lot, there's a lot of negative things to say about the millennials, but actually, but um, you know, from our standpoint, but but I, I think what I see what rings in a lot of the millennials' heart is this spirit to do social good. Um, I think I, I and and you know what, however you want to practice that, like you were saying, you know, whether you want to do it through God or you want to do it through another higher being you believe in, you know. That mission's the, the end mission is still the same, right? right. <laughs> You're helping people, so you know how you want to do it. You know that's just up to you. It's just like any other startup. You know, there's not going to be a a, a a cookbook recipe on how to how to succeed as a startup. So, um, but yeah, that, that that's what really interested me about your program is because I think that um, the life lesson part of it when these people are young is is, is is nil to zero, and and if they could have guidance from people who have done it before and actually have balanced their life, I think they'll they'll be a lot happier. Is just what I'm I'm just thinking, you know. Um, but you know, I, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Chad. To jump in, um, I mean, one of the biggest things we focus on in the program is is really how to build your character, and when it comes both to the entrepreneur but also the investors that, that back that entrepreneur. Um, character, trust, um, you know, having faith in things you cannot see yet um, become really, really important themes. And so what, we, what we've done here is um, I think just put some structure around things we already believed, already knew to be true. And, you know, during the course of going through building a startup, um, you know, which I've, I've done five times now, um, it is a fairly, I would say, lonely place, but it, it creates an opportunity for you to be distracted, um, to sacrifice too much that you may not necessarily realize until it's too late. And so what we wanted to do is to kind of create this environment where, you know, we're going to walk alongside of you we're going to put some structure into how you create and you know we're going to put people around you that that allow you to focus on some other things to help grow yourself and we believe you know and it's proving out in the numbers that um, creating this environment can can produce very successful not startups just startups that get funded but also um, great entrepreneurs who you know, we we all want to do something more than just you know make money. Um, we want to have a bigger impact. So, um, you know, what we're doing is really just putting some structure to accelerate you know the growth of companies and startups, but also accelerate the growth of the entrepreneurs. And you know, we believe by doing that, um, you know, we can change our, our city, our country, the world. Um, just by focusing on those two things. Yeah, yeah definitely. I, I, yeah, that's a really good way of pushing. I mean, it's really a mission, in a way. So, um, you know, I think it's good. Now, now, how many accelerator uh, classes have you had? Was this the first one that just graduated? Yeah, we we uh, opened the doors in January. Um, Chad already walked you through. We had about two hundred applications. We netted it down to ten. Um, and they just graduated, and we start accepting applications again August 1st on our website, uh, www.oceanaccelerator.com, and that'll be uploaded with the, what the application process looks like. And, and we'll take anywhere from 8 to 12 great companies um, and uh, build into them. Again, I think with 
the same program made better with everything we learned the first year. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, yeah, Chatter Scott. You know, I'm I'm sure you looked at these this last class I came through, which was you just said it was ten. You know, any any anything that popped out about one of those guys, or two or three or four of them that you, you want to talk about as part of your program and and maybe their development. Um, let me talk a little bit about um, a company called Circle. Um, and then, Chad, I'll let you jump in, and then I want to come back uh, just to give you a heads up, and I want to talk a little bit about a company called Arena 19. Sure. So, so Circle's just a, a, an amazing company. Uh, the founder is on his, like Chad, fourth or fifth uh, startup and has had uh, two or three successful exits, right? So clearly addicted to the space. <laughs> um, but he's developed uh, a service which significantly improves engagement by allowing any enterprise to tailor their newsletter to whatever their audience member wants. So you just sign up with Circle and boom, the content you want from your school, your company, your church, your synagogue, whatever, that's the content you get on a schedule you want it. So Tarek came in, Tarek Camille's the founder, co-founder, and he came in and, and he was really excited about a new accelerator being in Cincinnati, but he was somewhat skeptical about the faith piece um, and was very open that while he's willing to go through the journey, that our faith was not his faith. Sure. The single most engaged guy in every, every workshop was Tarek Camille. Not in an effort or a desire to convert to anything that anybody was advocating, but that the topic was so engaging, so affirming, so growth producing, that he was leading discussion after discussion. He just found this fantastic as a way to balance all the pressures of being a startup. And that energy we unlocked in him, and that our facilitators and guests unlocked in him, was just amazing impact on the whole class. Suddenly everybody was like, well, hey, if he's getting that much out of this, I, I might already believe what these guys believe. I better start leaning into this a little bit harder. So it was it was really cool to watch him, and he's going to be incredibly successful with Circle. And at the root of it, I think, despite having done this multiple times, he's approaching it more balanced and getting a lot more fun out of it as a result. Yeah, I think that's pretty important. Um, you know, the the ability to balance life challenges, as Chad had said earlier, I, I think is, is a challenge anywhere. I mean, it isn't just startups, but it's also people in high pressure um, tech positions. I was in one of them where, you know, we were a public company and the bottom line counted and, you know, you have to drive to the bottom line and, and, and you lose a little bit about yourself, I think, along the way, or you can, you can. You know, I'm not going to say you do. If you're very, very well grounded, uh, you have a good foundation. Um, that may not happen as much to all of us. <laughs> but when, when uh, things are a little bit new, and uh, you know, you, young people I see have, uh, you know, have have those those challenges. They have those um, temptations, I guess I would call it. You know, of of going down certain paths, as Chad and, and Scott you said. So, uh, hey, Chad, did you want to add add anything else to that? Um, yeah, I mean that. It's it's hard to single out any one company um, on some of the things that they they've accomplished, and you know I just encourage people to go to our site so they can check out all all ten companies. But um, I I would say that you know as part of um, kind of where each company steps into the program, they're in very different places. Um, you know, we've we've had uh, some who were kind of lifelong family entrepreneurs, who came up with an idea and and wanted to kind of leave the family business and go into um, start something completely on their own, um, like with Arena 19. Um, you have you know friends who came together around a passion for baseball, and just wanted to make baseball, um, I would say cool again, but make Make it a part of um, part of our culture and our pastime, and build um, you know digital apps as a part of it. You had um, you know Fat and Chad and, and Michael from Lifeboat that, that you you've talked to before, um, who are building a new experience for um, breaking down on the side of the road, which we all know is sometimes terrifying, especially if you have kids out on the road. 
Um, and we had others who uh, had, you know, a very early early stage idea, um, and nothing more than you know a deck, a presentation on it. Um, but we knew the two guys, and we knew that they had um, what it took um, to build something great. So I'd, I would just encourage you know anybody who might be listening to this that. Um, you know, starting August 1st, we've got applications open. Um, and the companies that go through the program, no matter what stage they're at, um, you know, we've, we've worked really hard to put together a best-in-class uh, program, and it's, it's, it's definitely a, a little unique, um, and that's, that's a good thing. Um, and so we're looking for people who are, you know, kind of brave to take that step and do... Um, go into this type of program, which you know challenges not everything you believe, but challenges things, certain things in your life um, that we think could be could be improved on, and um, hopefully will put you, but also your company, in a very different light at the end of end of the program. Yeah, well, that's that's great. I I guess you know you guys. Wow, you, you really really feel good after this interview here, so I think we'll probably close this out. But yeah, exactly. Um, you know, people out there, um, Ocean Accelerator has a program uh, with the next class starting on August 1st, and you can visit uh, www.oceanaccelerator.com for more details on the, on the application, just like what Scott and Chad just said. But uh, anyway, that was Scott Weiss and Chad Reynolds, co-founders of Ocean Accelerator, introducing the faith component to startups. So thanks for joining us, everyone. This is Greg Gloria, AK Social Greg, on Twitter for the Nerd Stalker Media Network, where we believe in tech, startups, design, and you. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and be careful to, out there. Hey, hey, Chad, Scott, thanks for your time, and I really appreciate that. Yeah, no Good problem. Time. I appreciate it. Thank you.